Notice how the narrative has changed around the Texas Longhorns from this time last year to where we sit right now. Sounds like some different things are being said around Steve Starkeesian and company. We'll address that together right now, but first things first, make sure you are two things. First, subscribe to here, right here to this channel. We're live three times a week, full hour-long episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. So I guess it's sort of three things. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, to the podcast, and then also to me on the social channel so we can have some good interaction back and forth at JD Pakel on Twitter as well as on Instagram. So as I said at the top of this thing, the narrative around Texas is very, very different right now than it was this time last year. And I don't think we should just overlook the way that people were talking about Texas because this time last year, the narrative was, we always hear this same hype around Texas. They always underperform. They always overpromise, underdeliver. Texas, they've got bad culture. They're never going to do this. They're never going to do that. And the mistake that we made across the college football public was we tied a narrative to a logo, completely dismissing the reality that we had a different coach in Austin, Texas. We had a different quarterback in Austin, Texas that was there for the previous mis, uh, misfortunes and the, the shortcomings they had had in Austin. So I think what we need to talk about right now is how and why we arrived at this narrative that we're at currently. Because the narrative currently is Texas is poised to potentially be a college football national title contender. Texas, I think most people feel pretty confident about where they stand day one in the SEC. Not going to say they're, they're winning the conference outright and that's just the landslide thought, but there is some, I think, concessions even from the people that used to think negative about Texas that, okay, they're probably going to be all right when they step into the SEC. The culture problems people thought they had, you don't hear much talk about that anymore. And I think Steve Sarkeesian deserves all the credit in the world for the job he's done out there on the 40 acres. Because the way that we used to perceive that Texas job, forget Texas as a whole, that Texas job, it was like, yeah, many have tried, many have failed. The culture there, not just in that locker room, yeah, the locker room's got some issues, was the thought outside looking in. But the thought was, hey, the boosters, the powers that be in Austin, Texas, they're not even going to let you do your job. They're going to be you know, tugging on your shirt for access. They're going to be telling you what you have to do. They're going to be asking for specific meetings the days before a game. Like as, That was the thought was, hey, you can't do what you want to do as a head coach at Texas. Doesn't look that way based on how Steve Sarkeesian is winning right now on the 40 acres. Five and seven the first year, had to get the bat out. Second year, they go eight and four. This past year, Big 12 title before they leave the conference. College football playoff berth, beat Alabama by double digits in Tuscaloosa. And I think the, the, the thing that we got to talk about with Steve Sarkeesian is it wasn't an overnight success by nature of the records that I just mentioned. But I think what Steve Sarkeesian did from a ground level working up, I have to believe, is he changed the handbook for what it is required of you to be a football player at the, at the University of Texas. And that's not me saying that he legitimately passed out a different manual during their meeting room during fall camp, which maybe he did. But I mean, from what is asked of you as a Texas football player, he changed the entire approach from the outside looking in or from the inside out, I guess is the better way to phrase that. You know, I know that is based on how many players they had transfer out of Texas. We say it a lot on this show. Whenever a program is in the process of being turned around, there's some growing pains. When you do things the right way, there are some negative repercussions at the start of that to get to the ultimate positive outcome that you want to get to. For Texas, that, that, that negative initial symptom was you had a lot of guys transfer out. Over 40 players from the first two years they were there, from 2022 to 2023. Both of those classes had over 20 guys transfer out. Now, I'm not saying all those were culture transfers where, hey, it's not a fit culture, so we're going to leave. Some of that was, I'm sure, playing time. Some of that was scheme fit. I understand all that. But I do think a fair amount of that, a solid percentage of that, was guys that did not fit the way that Steve Sarkeesian wanted to do things from a cultural level and said, all right, we don't need you here. All right, fine. And whether it was uh, Steve Sarkeesian communicating that to them or whether it was them sort of coming to that conclusion on their own, the bottom line here is they had to get the bad out before they could get the good in. And the standard had changed internally when Steve Sarkeesian got there. And so when you put the bar way up here, not everyone's going to be able to meet it. And that's a good thing. That is addition by subtraction, as folks like to say. He said, we're going to do things a certain way. We're not going to value the external things, the things that people like to tie the University of Texas to. 
We're not, we're not going to be about the off the field stuff, the Instagram followers, the likes. Like those things will come. We can, you know, we can use those things as recruiting tools for us here at Texas once we start winning some ball games. But like, we're not going to be about the off field stuff. We're going to be about the, the on the field stuff, and we'll go forward from there. And so when we look at Steve Sarkeesian, the way that he built it, I think yes, it's that culture. It's also the staff he put in place to foster that culture. Like Bo Davis, I understand he's not at, at Texas anymore, but most Texas fans would probably point to that moment where he yells at everybody on that bus, and someone captured it on video, which is probably a sign of what was going on there. But Bo Davis yells at everybody involved on that bus after a tough loss and says, if you don't want to do things the way that we're doing it here, get in the portal. Get in the portal. And I think a lot of guys took his advice by nature of that 40 guys that had transferred out uh, over that two-year span. He has done something, Steve Sarkeesian has, that, as we alluded to before, many people tried and couldn't do. And I don't think it's so much an issue of the previous individuals from a Charlie Strong to a Tom Herman just weren't good coaches. Obviously, if you're able to be the head football coach at a place like Texas, you've got to have some skins on the wall. But I think Steve Sarkeesian and his personality was exactly what Texas needed when he got there. Steve Sarkeesian, I think, was the perfect blend, and is the perfect blend, of star power, so the job's not too big for him, and then also that cool confidence. So where he's intense, but he's not overly intense to where we're squeezing this thing too hard to where we play tight and our team plays tight as a response to that. Steve Sarkeesian called plays for Nick Saban. Steve Sarkeesian called plays in the NFL. Steve Sarkeesian, it's been well documented, had some personal struggles. Steve Sarkeesian was the head coach at USC and failed, and I think all those things in addition to his other stops along his coaching career, prepared him for this job. Like, this job wasn't too big for Steve Sarkeesian. This wasn't his first big break. He had been to the mountaintop, he'd been to the valley, and now being at Texas, of course it's a massive opportunity, and he understands that, but he's not viewing it, I think, the same way that I have to believe maybe a coach who was taking that job and it was their first big break maybe would have taken it. And so there's that part of it, and there's also the part where you talk about how that team performed against Alabama in Tuscaloosa week two where everybody's watching that game, college game days there. Like, it was a circus. We got to be there ourselves. His team played extremely confident, extremely cool. And teams, I believe, take on the persona of what their leadership operates like. And Steve Sarkeesian, you heard, I mean, if you listen to the post-game press conference from different players, they're like, yeah, we knew we had to be aggressive. We were confident. We prepared for that moment. Steve Sarkeesian instilled a lot of confidence in them for that moment, and they executed and so looking forward now, I think we got to talk about Texas a different way. And then if you're just a college football fan, period, if you've made it to this far in the video and you are not a Texas fan, this is where this applies to you. I think we got to stop tying narratives to logos. We do. I mean, Texas is a great example. They're never going to be able to win the, the conference. They're never going to be able to make the college football playoff. What I said at the top of this thing, they're always going to overpromise, under deliver. And then Texas last year goes out and does what they do and that narrative is pretty much a thing of the past. People used to say the same thing about Kirby Smart. He can't win the big one. He'll never be able to win a national championship. They'll never get over the hump. And then two national titles later, that narrative is pretty much dead. It's, it's I mean, it's yesterday's news. So narratives, while they sound nice on Twitter and while they're great for YouTube thumbnails, we have to understand now, narratives are just that. They're narratives. They have no power on fourth and one. They have no power when you're playing for the, the final play of the game and it's overtime and you got to get in the end zone. The narrative doesn't matter at that point in time. When you need five yards on third and four, narrative doesn't matter. And so that's the first part of this. But if you're Texas looking forward to the future, like I think everything they have in place that Steve Sarkeesian has installed now from culture to roster to the way they built the trenches to their elite quarterback depth they have right now, the way he's going to recruit the quarterback position. They are going to be in a place moving forward here, I think, to where they're just getting started based on what happened this past season. Does the path get easier moving to the SEC? Of course not. But the thought that you can't develop at Texas, they had two first-round picks this past year. The culture's bad. We saw them go through every single up and down from having their quarterback hurt to having to battle through different adverse situations with you know winning through just the defensive side of the ball. like We saw Texas battle every single different scenario this past year to where if the culture was bad, that would have been exposed. Didn't see that. So the things they have in place right now are going to, I think, stand the test of time. They're going to be sustainable. And I'm excited to see what Texas is that first year in the SEC and beyond. Because if they win in the SEC this first year, 
If they go out and just make it to Atlanta, forget win the conference, they show up in Atlanta and make the college football playoff, and they're a, let's call it a 10-2 and two football team. That's going to pour rocket fuel on that whole thing. That, that will be like putting Mentos into the Coke bottle that is that Texas program. It'll just blow up in the most positive way possible. So the narrative around Texas has changed tremendously, the difference a year makes. And I think, again, they are just getting started, and all the credit belongs to Steve Sarkeesian for the way that he's developed, his culture, and his perfect blend, I think, when it comes to his star power, not having the job be too big for him, but also having the cool confidence that his team has embodied and allowed them to have the success they had last season. So let me know, Twitter and Instagram. Get at me on there and let me know, at J.D. Paquel, how you feel about Texas, the narrative around them, and how you think they're going to be moving into the future. We're live tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you are subscribed. Get in the live chat. We have a good time. Also, podcast. Can't stress enough. Podcast, podcast, podcast. The Hard Count with J.D. Paquel on Apple and on Spotify. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.